my name's Annabelle. Um, I'm an educator, artist and researcher um, from London uh, and I have family lineages from Indonesia and Ireland. Uh, I started supporting and advocating for disabled people long before I learned that I'm disabled myself. Um, I received a few diagnoses between 2015 and 2016 uh, after which I learned that I'm neurodivergent and I have a condition that causes me chronic pain and fatigue. I refer to myself as a crip, sick, uh, mad, neurodivergent survivor and a woman of colour and that reclamation is an incredibly important part of how disability history has always been there but has grown so much, including language. Um, and for that reason, it means everything to me because it reminds me that as disabled people, we are so resilient and we have such imagination and creativity to ensure that we continue to be included in society. And that has been shown for centuries, but more recently since I think 1945. And that is through our own presence in society, but also as original life hackers. It's on how I would have answered your next question, which was about being a disabled person of colour. And it's like, uh, there's hostile environment, and then there's the DWP's treatment of people with disabilities at the moment. And they seem to have not changed in 50 years, you know, that they would treat a child with a disability so harshly to reject them from this country that not even allow my family to have some uh, contact with him after that easily and you know what has changed very little you know they're still separating children from their families and they're still making it very painful for people who come to this country uh, whether they are disabled or not you know probably worse if they are that's what it feels like um, so yeah, it's a, a bit a problem, a, a pain for my family that I'd known for a long time about his life and how short it was. But to know that it could have been a very different story for us, and we could have had a much more uh, involved uh, time in his life, especially for my mum, was painful to know. I just feel very comfortable in my own skin, and I don't, I don't really kind of think of myself as. You know, the Fazile who was born in India or Shia parents or the Fazile who's blind. It's just all part of me and it's a, they should all be visible parts of me. I don't really believe in all that stuff about I don't see what colour you are and I don't see your disability and all that jazz. That's not for me. I want people to see everything about me and then just accept it. Um, but we are multifaceted individuals, you know, your identity isn't defined by disability or being a person of colour or sexuality or religion or uh, social class or what have you, um, you know, it's a combination of these things. Um, but I, I think, I do believe that uh, intersectional disadvantage and intersectional advantage both exist, they are both real things. Um, I find it fascinating that we think to address one thing, such as disability, um, not necessarily having an impact on other things, such as being a person of colour. This was the person who threatened me with institutionalisation. She said word for word, and then she put it in a report. She said, if you need more than seven hours care a week, we would be questioning whether you could live independently and we would be investigating institutionalised care. Well, and I don't think they'd have done that to a white person in that same situation. Hmm. There are two things, and one of those is about the mainstream experience of being a racialized disabled, per disabled person who can be put to the bottom of the pile. And the other one is about how I see that reflected in movements too. I've seen people try and raise really basic questions about, for example, black disability, rates of disability in the UK, connecting different kinds of incarceration. And I've seen people shoot it down in a kind of, this isn't a disability issue. And I'm kind of just like, no, you mean it's not a white disability issue? Uh, this 
country is still coming to terms with accepting people of colour of protected characteristics as being British. Um, you throw something else into the mix, whether that's ability or um, a sexual orientation, um, and it becomes even more complex because uh, society as a whole, the establishment still hasn't, isn't basic, basically is not inclusive. The normative is white, able-bodied, um, and our society has got to get to grips with the fact that life, society, people are far more complex than that, and we are far more diverse. As soon as we are placed in a box, we want to break out. Not knowing that we have been confined to a system that likes to show us what colouring in the lines look like. We need to learn to liberate ourselves like dandelions with just 